Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is from Victory Point Games. It is Paul Koenig's Market Garden, Einhoven Bridge, historical game number nine. Paul Koenig's Market Garden is a series of small format competitive introductory level war games covering the critical first three days of Operation Market Garden where the Allies attempted to seize a series of bridges in Holland and end World War II before Christmas. Each game in a series covers a separate bridge, Arnhem, Ninjemegen, and Einhoven. Einhoven is the second game in the Market Garden series covering the events happening at this vital river crossing from 17th, September 17th to 19th, 1944. Each player commands their German or American forces so as to capture key objectives on the board while keeping your casualties down and your opponent's casualties up. With plenty of decision making and optional rules to extend gameplay and realism, the very collapse of Germany is at stake as you... You make your stand and bring your enemies down at Einhoven Bridge. Alright, so this is for two players, 13 and up, approximate play playing time 50 minutes, and complexity 3 out of 9, and solitaire suitability 7 out of 8. Alright, looks like this here is just a cover sheet. And here it's pimping the D-Day series. I actually want these games. I haven't gotten a hold of any of these D-Day ones yet. Here's an ad for Cruel Necessity. The English Civil War, Wings for the Baron, and Napoleonic 20, 100 Days 20, Relive the Battles of Tolentino and Waterloo. Don't have any of those. Alright, this looks like some operational, or excuse me, operations examples. Examples for the operation fire phase and fire combat. What else do we have in here? This looks like the standard rules here. Looks like a pretty short rule set. You got a combat strength and a movement allowance on your counter. Here's going over game setup. And here's your sequence of play. You have a paratroop landing phase, support phase which is on day turns only where you have artillery and allied support markers might be allocated to either player and then an operations phase which is on day turns only interesting and fourth is a german redeployment phase which obviously is only done by the germans and then a housekeeping phase where you just keep track of what turn you're on and see if you're the winner all right it's got rules on paratroop landings here it's going over support in the operations phase movement Fire combat. For each fire attack, here's the steps. Preparation, you indicate the target hex that you're attacking. And then add the strengths of all your units. And then units conducting mobile fire have their combat strengths halved individually before they are totaled. And defensive support, the defender may assign his available artillery or allied support points to the battle. And then offensive support where they assign artillery or allied support points to the battle and you got terrain effects too which affect combat and it looks like for combat resolution it doesn't look like there's a table uh, instead you roll and if it's less than the attack factor one hit is scored if it's equal to the attack factor an exchange result occurs if the roll is greater than the attack factor the result is a miss. All right, here's your close combat rules and retreats. And how to win at the conclusion of the last turn. Both players determine how many victory points they have earned according to the schedule provided in the game's exclusive rules. All right, so the standard rules here seem pretty simple, which is good. Let's see where these exclusive rules are. Here's your exclusive rules. Looks like it's got a modified paratroop landings. And this one's some, some special movement rules. And fire combat. Looks like you can conduct fire combat against the bridges at half combat strength, which makes sense. Small bridges minus one combat strength. And here's your victory point schedule here. And as far as optional rules, U.S. machine gun units.
got some leadership rules that are optional interdiction and indirect fire so yeah this looks like it'd be a real easy game to get into and here's some designer notes here let's take a look at the map and the counters looks like it also includes a baggie with a really small dice but hell they included a dice which is good because most micro games don't or mini games whatever you want to call them looks like they have another bag for uh, the other player And here's your counters here. The standard natal military symbols, they, they look alright for a micro game. This doesn't have the um, laser cut counters like some other games. Maybe the if there's a box game version of this, maybe that does. These are just standard cardboard, but they're, they're okay. Here you got your interdicted markers, Allied air support, and hit some hit markers there and keep track of your game turn with that. Let's take a look at the map. Maps on a thicker card stack. See what's on here. Actually, this, this looks pretty good. This doesn't look bad at all for a micro game map. I like it. Here's your paratroop landing table, your terrain effects chart. And here's where you keep track of the turns and then. Your, has your day sequence of play, night sequence of play, and your battle sequence. So everything you need is literally on the map. That's awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. If you've tried this, of course, chime in and let us know what you thought of it. Have a good evening.